Hey everybody, Miss McCutcheon here with chapter 17 of Stamped, titled Birth of a Nation and a New Nuisance. The same year the first Tarzan novel was published, Black people got tricked again, again, by a political candidate. They helped to get the Democrat Woodrow Wilson elected. Now seems like a good time to adjust the whole Republican Democrat thing. At this point in history, the Democrats dominated the South. They were opposed to the expansion of civil rights and anything that had to do with far reaching federal power, like railroads, settling the West with homesteaders and not slave owners, even state university systems. Today, we'd say they were against big government. Republicans at this time dominated the North. They were for civil rights, at least politically, and wanted expansion and railroads and even a state university system. I know, it feels like I got their descriptions mixed up, like we're living in backward land. Maybe we are. Anyway, back to Woodrow Wilson. He was a Democrat, and during his first term, he let Black people know what he thought about them by enjoying the first ever film screening in the White House of Hollywood's first blockbuster film, W.D. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation. The film was based on a book called The Klansman. Can you guess what this movie was about? Here's the basic plot. One, a black man, played by a white man in blackface, tries to rape a white woman. Two, she jumps off of a cliff and kills herself. Three, Klansmen avenge her death. Four, the end. The beginning of a new outrage. I want to be clear here. Rape isn't something to be taken lightly or to be turned back on the victim as a sharp blade of blame. But during this time, allegations of rape were often used as an excuse to lynch Black men, rooted in the stereotype of the savagery of the Black man and the precociousness of the white woman. Black people protested the movie. The intellects like Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois fought in their intellectual base, writing. But Southern Black activists did much more. They protested with their feet. It was time to go. It's important to note that this was during the Great War, also known as World War I. But the Great War at home between Blacks and whites had pushed Blacks to the brink. Black people started to leave the South in droves. Imagine the biggest parade you've ever seen and then multiply it by a bazillion. But it didn't look as uniform or as happy. This was a parade of progress. One of hope after severe exhaustion. Black people were tired of being lied to, tired of being told life was better after emancipation as if Jim Crow's hadn't made their lives miserable, as if politicians hadn't taken advantage of them, milking them for votes to gain power only to slap black people back down, as if the media hadn't continued to push racist narratives that would put black people's lives at risk off page and off screen. And that is the end of chapter 17.